restaurant quality gourmet meals delivered straight to your home. Choose from over 50 plus gourmet meal options cooked by world class chefs and delivered frozen, ready to eat within minutes and no commit. Welcome to the one shop gourmet food delivery specialized affordable options to eat right and feel great. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Every ingredient is hand picked to the highest standard. And why you should buy from homebistro.com? Restaurant quality made with natural ingredients delivered right to your door. Overnight shopping is available. Diabetic, paleo, heart health, and vegetarian options to eat during business since 1999. Courteous, knowledgeable, and professional support. Complete PCI compliant SSL security ordering and great meals. Choose from some of my favorite dishes. The Mediterranean chicken with orange honey sauce, the charbroiled chicken romesco, or the grilled chicken breast with sweet and spicy vegetables. No matter what you choose, you can't lose with homebistro.com. Eat great, feel good, and save some money with homebistro.com. Hit the link in the description section below for more information. black and gold family man it's time for another installment of uh the sports coma we in the building big ups to the family members appreciate y'all being here please strike up on the like button please subscribe if you aren't a subscriber enjoying the great saint thank tank today much love to the black and gold family members i salute you thank you for being here and as i always been saying now for over five years welcome 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 you're now rocking with the sports coma with big q and the guys where we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family. Once again, I'm Big Q, your host, the host, and you are the great Saint Thank Tank, the best of the black and gold nation is well representing. Much love to you guys. Appreciate y'all being here on this Thursday edition of the Coma entitled Saints News. Saints save another seven million by cutting vet cornerback Janaris Jenkins. A lot to unpack there, and we'll go over some articles today to cover that. But shouldn't be coming as much as a surprise, family. Like um, we, you know, like I've been kind of telling the family members about this for some time. Is you know, this team is is a certain uh, degree of desperation that you would uh, that you try to have. Uh, Janoris Jenkins um, played really well. Uh, in my opinion is that uh, he was the best cornerback. The Saints had last year. He played better than Laddie Dad, in my opinion. You know, but very interesting that the Saints would rather, instead of restructure Jenkins' contract, obviously, you know, I think they might have went at him with a restructure and he didn't like it. The Saints ultimately say, well, we're just going to have to release him. You know? And they put him in the street. So with that being said, $7 million, the Saints open up. Uh, for the release of Janoris Jenkins while tagging Marcus Williams at $10 million a season. Does that make sense to you? I don't know, but it don't make sense for you to be $50 million in the hole anyway. You know, the kicking of the can is not a positive thing. Uh, you know, if you go back and think about it, it's a very dysfunctional, uh, ridiculous way of handling the economics and really, truly, uh, once we get out of it, hopefully we don't embark upon the kicking of the can nonsense anymore. Let's do this stuff the right way. 
But, you know, that's a that's a foregone conclusion in many accounts, as this is almost kicking of the can in, in uh, Mickey Loomis mind is is is, is commonplace is breathing, walking and eating. You know, so with that being said, I like to thank all the great same thing, Tank family members for being in the live stream. Appreciate y'all chiming in, man. Please strike upon the like button. We're gonna go on our roll call. Who that to you, brother Paul? Good to see you in the live stream. Much love to brother Paul. Cameron, who that to you? Brother Gundam, who that to you? Says, man, oh man, what's next? Talk to me, big Q. <laughs> this one hurts as much as the Quine Alexander move. Yep, yep, yep. Well, expect more, my friend. You're gonna see more releases. The Saints still have to get down up underneath the cap. And they got to the 17th of it. You know, a lot of people say, well, Q, why don't they just go and uh, restructure what Mike Thomas is working with? Well, in order for that to work, the guy that you're trying to restructure has to give you permission to do that. We're going to restructure your deal, Mike, and work this down. Well, I don't want you to do that. Then you either release them or trade them or if the guy that you got your hands on if he says no you can't touch him right you got to give him permission to touch your contract to be able to restructure it you know and if the guy doesn't agree to it then you put him in the street trade him or you, you or if he's a main player you can't touch him so with that being said man it got to be an agreement on both sides of it you know what i'm saying because <clears throat> originally the team just uh, made the agreement with you to say listen i'm gonna pay you this much this year think about it like this if you owe me 10 million this year and 10 million the next year and 10 million a year after that, you know, that's an handshake agreement agreement that we did. And then I signed on that contract. They didn't in turn signed on the contract. The deal is now fixed legally. It's concrete now for the length of the deal. The only thing changed. Now, if I uphold my side of things, you know, I'm expecting that 10 million when I do everything I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to collect that 10 every year according to that contract. If the team all, all of a sudden starts having money problems, that's not the responsibility of the player. That's the responsibility of the general manager or the person that's controlling the purse strings of the team. Then said player will have to agree upon a reduction of his salary for that year or into the future. We'll say, well, look, in Q, I know we owe you 10, but if you can just uh, if you can just agree to take five, it'll help the team out, you know, very, very fantastically. And I will say, Mickey, okay, you can cut that check. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you can give me that five right now. Okay, here's a $5 million check, Q, right to you right now. And then I will say, could you make that a cashier's check? <laughs> no offense, Mickey. <laughs> but I'd make that in the cashier's check and or, depo or direct deposit it to my account every damn uh, uh, right now. $5 million. But uh, uh, if you're smart, send it to my charity. <laughs> That's why them agents tell them players, man, listen, man, get you a get you a charity. You can see it because not only do you get good press when you do something for a good cause, but it's also a good way to protect money from taxation. Hmm. 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 It was, which explain why so many of, of those people are a lot wealthier than the common folk because a lot of the loopholes are not provided for you at your current monetary level, depending if you're not a millionaire. A lot of loopholes when you get up there and they know all of them. We just don't know all of them, but I know a lot of them too. But the reality at the end of the day is you have to be, uh, you gotta be, you gotta be agreeable to that. Perhaps Mike isn't. I would have went to him first. You seen Cam do it. Several other Saints players do it. We'll see what happens as this thing starts twisting and turning moving forward. So with that being said, let's keep on going down to the uh, shout out. So thank you, brother Gundam with that, with the shout out. Big ups. JT, what's up, fam? Big ups to JT. Who that to you? Uh, who else? We got Joshua Hoover. Who that to you, fam? Big ups to you. And absolutely right, Joshua. Reports. And I was saying that prior to it, like when it was when they got, when they were able to pick up Quan Alexander in the trade. For Kiko Alonso in the fifth round draft pick this year, ultimately what it served was a Super Bowl or bus move. And, and of course, it didn't work. He got hurt and didn't go past week 16, which is a shame. But whether he hit on it or not, the Saints was not going to keep him at 13 million next year. He could have came in here and had 200 tackles. It wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked financially speaking because you was running up against a brick wall. 
So eventually the Saints would have gotten an opportunity to release him. And he does want to play with the Saints. And I think it would be smart for Quan Alexander, uh, uh, knowing that the Saints are going to release him, you know, from his contract and free up $13 million. And then ultimately what that will do is that will give Quan an opportunity to come back at a more friendly one-year prove-it deal. I can show you I can be healthy which works for Quan and the Saints. So it does provide a good veteran, if he's healthy, that is, at a cheap rate to come in and help with the depth issues, possibly start if he can ball in camp. So it's a win-win, in my opinion, for uh, Quan Alexander, if he wishes to hang around, and which reports that I'm getting is that he does. So just to let you know, but that that well stated, that brother, uh, 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 who said that? Uh, Brother Joshua. Thank you. What's up, Latasha? Who that to you, Latasha Newman? Who that, baby? Appreciate you. KB, who that to you, baby? Brian Pearson, who that to you as well? Gabriel Thomas, who that to you? Much love, family members. What's up, Ja? Ja Williams, who that to you? Tramal Kellup, who that to you? Much love. Who that nation? What's up, fam? Who that to you? Uh, Lori, what's up, Lori? Who that to you as well? Much love. What's up, Kelly? Kelly B, who that to you as well. Much love to the family members. And I appreciate y'all chiming in, man, on this Thursday edition of the Coma. Tragic. What's up, brother? Tragic. 504 in the building as well. Brother Derek. What's up, brother Derek? Who that to you, brother? Good to see brother Derek in the building. Man, where you been, man? Where you been, man? Where have you been, Derek? You ain't gonna just sneak up in the chat. And just say who that <laughs> man? Where you been at, man? <laughs> where you been? <laughs> Much love to brother Derek and the family, man. Good to see you, brother. Ice man, what's up, fam? Says so we will so we get rid of a pro bowler to keep a guy that couldn't make it in sixty games. Hey, talk to coach. Talk to coach Peyton, bro. Joe Wiley, who that to you? What's up, fam? Much love to you. I know, JT. He says, P-Rob, I know, bro. How you going to get rid of Janoris Jenkins, the Jackrabbit, and you still got Patrick Robinson on the team? Where is the vision here? Where's the vision? You should be cutting from the least productive on up. You get what I'm saying? The least productive, because to a degree, we got to look at it like this. To a degree, if you got a guy that's balling or doing a good job and he earned his money, Sometimes you might be thinking, okay, listen, this guy has done a good job. Let's not go at him. Let's go at the guy's production that don't match the contract. And in some cases, in, in, including this year, that could have, could have been the case with Mike Thomas, obviously Cam Jordan, because Cam Jordan was a dude that had five and a half sacks this year. Previous than that, he was double digits. So, I mean, he woefully underperformed in terms of what his contract says, which is why he restructured. And then you have a lot of other big wigs out there that could do the same as well. So I agree with you. How could you even go at Janoris Jenkins like this without releasing Patrick Robinson? That's why I was against uh, the move to tag uh, uh, Marcus Williams for anything. If anything is showing you, you don't have the money to tag anybody and any additional money on top of the 40 of million bucks that you have will become cumbersome. You know, and you can't and you can't like, OK, we're going to get another 50 million dollars once we get up under this 50. Don't work like that. You're negotiating and pulling off money from contracts of players at the top 51. That's only so many contracts you can do that with that people will agree to let you do that with. So we'll just watch how it all goes down line. We'll see. But I agree with you on that. Iceman, this is not a good look. But I, hey, bro. Hey. You're going to have to pay for them one way or the other. Now, the people that like the cornerback pick in the draft, doesn't that become a, a big, the biggest need you got outside the quarterback position? If now, 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 now you see that it's the cornerback now. If, you go, if the draft was happening tomorrow, you know the biggest need would be cornerback. And, of course, that does make put you in a difficult boat you know, because you have a rookie over there. But the reality at the end of the day is you might get a young veteran. Perhaps we can get a Mike Davis. I, I've said that Mike Davis from the Rams. I mean, from the Chargers. Excuse me. How about Hilton uh, from uh, uh, from from the Steelers? These are good cornerbacks. Had a few injury problems, but, you know, you'll, you'll pay 
maybe five to six million for him a season. You know, you know, I just uh, we'll see the vision, fam. But this is desperation cutting, man. He just swinging the axe. He's swinging that damn axe like he one of these terrified teenagers in one of these corny ass uh, scary movies. <laughs> he just swinging, swing, swinging, just swinging it, you know. All right, what's up, King Creole? What's up, fam? Who that till you? Good to see you in the building. Inevitable. What's up, fam? Good to see you. Brother Jerry as well. Much love. Pick it and flick it. Much love. Big Sean, what's up, fam? Good to see my dog, Big Sean, in the building as well. Uh, James, what's up, Brother James? Brother James says, um, uh, hold on, Judge. He says, what's good? He says, yeah, like the fam say, this do hurt. Just like Sanders released, we could get by without Emmanuel. But Jenkins was great. Held down his side of the field. Some great picks and chemistry with defensive backs. Doesn't matter. Uh, Mickey said, we're going to put him in the street and find somebody cheaper. I, I, I don't agree upon it. I think you shouldn't touch that secondary. I really don't. Maybe you should have went somewhere else and chopped somewhere. Like get Patrick Robinson dusty, dusty, rusty ass up off this team. With hamstring issues everywhere. But you're going to hold tight to him. You know, there isn't anybody else you can go after and restructure. You know that, that you know. There are other places you could have win besides Janoris Jenkins, man. Seriously. It's all good, though. All right. DeWine says, uh, yep, yep. Tasha says, uh, do something with Taysom Hill. They can't. You know, unless they extend him or trade him, they can't do a damn thing. Well, they can say, okay, we're going to take the $16 million. You true, Tasha. That's true, baby. Come to think about it. Uh, they can either extend his deal to take money off this year. Or they can give him, or he accept a uh, payment half of his due in terms of a signing bonus. He could do a lot. It's just they're deciding to use these moves, I guess, for, you know, and it could be a smoke screen, say, if you don't like the player or, or what have you. And the player know what their value is. That man not going to take a reduction in pay. And he coming off the, the uh, a season where he was the best cornerback on the Saints secondary. And, I mean, period. He was better than Laddie Daddy, in my opinion. You know, and some people say, man, I was balling. I ain't taking no cut. That's what happened with Darren Sproles. Darren Sproles told them people, go ask Drew Brees for the money. You know, you coming to me and I'm leading the team. I'm I'm um, I'm kick returning punt. I'm the top kick returner, punt returner. I'm uh, the second best running back and I'm second or third as a wide receiver on this team. You want me to take up a cut and pay? No, I'm not doing that. And his wife was very adamant about it. She had his back. She a ride or die. And the Saints traded the man, you know, and and that's just that's just pathetic, man. That's that's a bad president, man. Very a very bad president. You got to reward those that's doing the right way and take it away from the ones that's not. Simple as that. All right, let's keep it going. Big ups, Cameron says uh, hi everyone. Dave, so just curious. All right, appreciate Cameron. Very friendly person. Asking about everybody's day. We doing fine, Cameron. Thank you. Appreciate the the ask, my friend. Big Sean said we messed up with Sean. Bag Drew. To come back now, he's biting us. Yep, yep, yep. That too, that you got that. Uh, what is it? You got 20 million on this year, and you got money going into the future. But you, you, I can't get people to get with me on that, brother Sean. I can't get people to ride with me on that. Everything these people do is peaches and creams and sunnies up all up top. It's ice cream raining down, raining down the damn sky with uh, sprinkles and every damn thing. I can't get them to see the logic. You know, I can't get them to see that. That, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is going to bite us because they pushed, they mortgaged the future for the present. And now the future is due looking for their money, you know, terrible. Paul says, oh, yeah, Big Q, Mike Thomas need to get cut down 19 or 10 or cut trade him if he's not cool with that. We'll see if they're going to touch him, bro. Thank you for that, Paul. What's up, Goonie? 360, hold on. I mean, 300, he says, we got to find a way to get Jack Rabbit back. Now, may, let's, may, you know, perhaps... Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. But I'll share some news with the family members on that. Perhaps they made an agreement, said we're going to just release you right now and then we'll bring you back. Something like what I'm hearing from Quan Alexander, but perhaps not. Perhaps not. Usually you don't let him touch the free agent market. You do that with Quan Alexander because you know there's no market you that you can't compete with. But for Jack Rabbit, Jack Rabbit gets in that market. He's one of the top five or top eight best cornerbacks in free agency. So you don't let free agency dictate the rate of what you're going to pay for the Jack Rabbit. That, in retrospect, it could possibly mean the Jack Rabbit is going to hop away. You know, big ups, thank you, Goonie. Uh, Devin says we better not 
uh, see P.J. Garbage self start next season. Don't be surprised, fam. Don't be surprised. Camera sell uh, the Pelicans win the <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you on the Pelicans. That's why I'm watching my uh, rocking my lid today, trying to give my pal some support on my Saint on the Saints podcast. You know, of course, on the Pelican post game report, we go we go all in. Derek says some major health issues, but I'm okay. Good, bro. Good to good to hear and see that you're here, man. And blessings to you, my friend. And may the Most High rain blessings of health, wealth, and success upon you. And every member of the Great Saint Think Tank, may all of you guys be blessed and have everything that you need in terms of health, wealth, and success for you and your family. Let that be, let that be a daily thing, the rain apart. So good to see you in that, brother Derek. Much love to you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Clean hands says, who, who that gonna be left on the roster? <laughs> I know cool, I know cool hands, clean hands. I know. What's up, brother Dada? Who that to you as well? All right, big ups to the rest of the family members, bro, uh, as well. All right, okay. Derek says, "Scoob, okay, okay, good." The school been keeping you post. Appreciate you, my brother. All right, who that to you, Kevin McKnight? What's up, fam? Who that to you as well? And all the rest of the great Saint Tank Tank family. Members. What's up, brother Anthony? Who that to you, fam? Good to see you in the chat as well. Uh, Ice Man, big ups, Michael Rios. What's up, Mike? Who that to you, fam? Good to see you in the chat. And if I missed your name, family, uh, please feel free to give me a who that and I give you a who that back, baby. So with that being said, family, we're going to get into this news about the Saints save seven million by getting rid of veteran cornerback Jenkins. But the reality at the end of the day is that you're cutting your starting cornerback, who was your best cornerback, arguably your best cornerback as of year. So we talk about the Saints minimizing turnover in the secondary when you finally got the secondary where it belongs. So if there's going to be turnover, why keep Mal Marcus Williams there? Let's just go all in. You know, Jack Rabbit to me is more valuable. And I and y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. Do you feel the same way? Is, is Jack Rabbit more valuable to you uh, than Marcus Williams? Most certainly Jack Rabbit was a guy that stepped up and performed at a, a very admirable level last year. So it's interesting, man. Yeah, Uncle Paul says uh, Justin Hardy can go also. Yeah, the problem with, with Justin Hardy is he's cheap. So, I mean, the Saints, if he he's going to take whatever they give him. And notice that they only get these guys like Hardy a one-year deal. They gave JT a Gray, I think uh, uh, they gave him a one-year, a two-year deal for Gray, I want to say. But they don't pay those, you know, unless you're the long snapper. He gave They gave him a four-year deal. They gave Lutz a multi-year deal. And, um, you know, they got Will Lutz on the cheap deal. But some of these special team aces, you know, you very rarely see them uh, in three year deals unless they really stepping up doing some stuff like Justin Hardy and all these other guys. You know, Craig, Rab Craig Robinson, I think it's time to kind of move on and find guys that can play those positions. These guys we have, we need guys that could do more than just play special teams as well. We need these guys that can fill in for a pinch if some injuries happen. Imagine. If you was uh, Justin Hardy, you was exclusively special teams. The Saints didn't have the uh, confidence to use Justin Hardy as a cornerback. And I often said the same thing that plagued Chris Banjo is going to ultimately lead to his demise. You can't just be a guy sitting your ass out there on the special team. Them people expect you to play in a defense if you're a defensive player and on offense if you're an offensive player. You got to be able to do them both. That's why that's and, and you got to do them. Justin Hardy got smoked. He is he's on the rotisserie stick too. He's a part of the 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 rotisserie brothers too. You know what I'm saying? He a part of them. That I remember a couple of years ago when the Saints was playing the Titans at the end of the season. Remember a couple of seasons ago? Man, they had a young wide receiver there. Boy, he gave Justin Hardy the business. Justin Hardy looked like he 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 never played football before. Never looked like he didn't know how to spell cornerback. <laughs> He was getting turned around so bad he looked like the the the, the scary lady from the uh from the omen. <laughs> his damn head was sp spinning on his head was spinning on his shoulders like it's a turnstile or something. I mean, look at this. I said, look at this crap here. He took all of your lunch money, Justin Hardy. That's why he said he was so hungry. He took whatever money he left and went and bought a pizza joint. <laughs> so he'd never go hungry again. <laughs> 
He probably going to have to take all that piece and take his ass there and flip pies for the rest of his life. If he keep playing like that, I'll tell you what. But anyway, man, let's move on. What's up, DeWine? Big ups to you and the rest of the family members. What's up, Kevin Conley? Much love, fam. He says, PJ Patrick Robson release should have been announced today. I know, bro. Well, PJ is, uh, uh, is, is not under contract. Patrick Robinson, unfortunately, is. You can free up just slight of $2 million if you get rid of Patrick Robinson. sorry ass. So, you know, it's ridiculous. What's up, Rush? All big ups to you, fam. And we'll get going, man, on this one, on this uh, version of the show, man. And we'll get into it because... We got a lot to talk about. We got a few articles we're going to go off. And I'm not going to hold you guys too long today. We got a show, a Pelican Post Game Report later on tonight. Who that for life? What's up, fam? PJ Next Q. I know, bro. He should have He should have been foist. He should have been the number one guy going into the start of the offseason. Should have been to chop his ass down off the team with his sorry tail. You know? But it is what it is. You know, eventually we'll get to that. But anyway, let's get to the article. Please hit the like buttons, family, if you hadn't already had an opportunity to hit the like button. There's over uh, 60 family members in the live stream. If you aren't a subscriber, please feel free to subscribe. you get a shout out from me and much love to the family members. And join the Great Saint Think Tank, man. Subscribe. Hit that damn subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. And what I found out is that a lot of people that follow the coma, they listen to the coma, but don't realize they subscribe to the coma. So I want you guys to hit the subscribe button. And uh, make it official. That way you can get the notifications. Also hit that bell as well moving forward. Because something tell me over the next couple of weeks is going to be very, very eventful. And we want to have these our discussions like we do on a daily basis. So big ups to the family members. Thank y'all as well as we get going. Who that to you, Michael? Michael says, sometimes I feel like Peyton takes bathroom breaks when the defense <laughs> is on the field. Because it seems like he doesn't see... Well, we see in PJ stand, but I mean, I, he said PJ is smart and he's versatile. And, and last time I checked, people only apply, apply the versatile label to guys or people, period, that do two things good. Well, you name me the two things that PJ do on the field good to make him get earn that versatile label. Now, I'm not now from a comedic standpoint. You can say you can make the the claim that he is versatile in effing up every damn thing, <laughs> and I would then agree with you. But of course, that's under, under the comedic label. But when you usually apply a versatile uh, claim to someone, usually it's two different things they go back and forth between that they actually do pretty good. You know, we don't usually apply that in a negative sense. You know, so you're absolutely right, Michael. I, I don't know what they're looking at. All right, Brother Paul said, Q, give me a call this weekend when you get a chance. All right, Brother Paul, let me see. I think I got you. Yeah, I think I still got you written down here in my book here. So we'll do that, brother. All right. Uh, Seabrook Fishing Stinker, uh, Sinkers. What's happening, fam? He said, just checking it, Q. Who that, baby? Appreciate you being here, Seabrook. Much love to your fam. A uh, tragedy says only top 51 salaries count against the cap. They may be why P. Rob wasn't cut. And, and it could be the case, but I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he is a part of that. If I'm, I might have to check my list, brother. Tragic, but I think he is amongst that 51. I might have to check on that though. But that's a good point. All right, big ups to the rest of the fans. Kevin says, "Uh, man, I don't cue. We looking like we shopping at the picker parts <laughs> at Salvage Yard, letting our best corner go. This is our status quo signature. Well, hey, we're gonna see how it shakes, bro. We're gonna see how it shakes because." Let's not be too premature because I'm thinking this could be a situation where the Saints are trying to see uh, that he lets the market dictate his value and they might feel like they can bring him back uh, to the team at the market value level. And perhaps they might be right. This is a value. And the truth be told, they are de this desperation moves right here when you, you got the 17th coming and today's the 11th. So you got, what, six days to get cut down by? And you still, what, 30-something million in the hole? You know, that that's a lot of money you got to kind of work up to. But anyway, let's get into it. New Orleans Saints save another $7 million by cutting veteran cornerback Janoris Jenkins today. This hit early. Uncle Mozzie sent me a text very early in the morning about this one here. He didn't like this one too much. Uh, he also uh, began to tell me, and I'm going to have to let him come on here so he can spread it. I know he's listening. But I, I know he want to come on here and, and, and make the case for uh the who that nation to in front of the great saint think tank is that the saints should look at trading for that's for maddie icy hot and i'm like man are you kidding me no man you i, I said man I, and and we spent he spent an hour 
explaining back and forth to me why Maddie Icy Hot, the Saints should go after Maddie Icy Hot, started running his, his – his, I was like, oh, no, absolutely not. I said, number one, I don't, he don't fit the, he don't fit what we're looking for because we already – why would we go with an older quarterback that's making, what, north of $12 million a season, two or three years left on him, versus for a Jameis Winston who's 27 years old in the prime of his career. Why would we do such a thing? You know, who we can get cheaper than that with a higher ceiling. And he still he has a lot of experience and he would not get off. And then, and then, of course, the last reason I said why we shouldn't do it, because he's a goddamn Atlanta Falcons quarterback, man. We don't we're not going to take their 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 quarterback and bring him and put him as the Saints. Are you kidding me? You know, and then I explained to him why it's not a good idea to go to your rival and go get people to help help them win. Going to get a winner from your rival, like between New Orleans and Atlanta, the heated rivalry. They took a step back, in my opinion, by coming to the Saints and said, we can't win on our own. We need y'all to help us win. They basically did like a, we can't beat y'all, so we just going to join y'all. We about to take Fontenot away from y'all and put him on top of the team so that he can help us win. And when they did that, in my opinion, ain't no more rivalry. <laughs> If you can't, they basically conceded to the Saints ass whooping all these years and said, man, if we can't beat them, join them. And that man came in. Fontenot is all Louisiana. That man grew up in Louisiana. He went to Tulane. He took a job at, uh, at, at, at with the Saints and was there for 17, 18 years, man. That dude started damn near as the janitor and worked his way all the way up to the posi- to the, the scout director situation and to assistant general manager. And ultimately, the, the, the Falcons came along and plucked him. Very smart dude, but all Louisiana dude, all period. You couldn't find out of the millions upon millions of people, you couldn't find somebody else that had no attachment to the Saints organization. He spent 18 years as a Saints man. So you couldn't win nowhere else. You had to come to the black and gold and get help. So they just basically said, if you can't beat them, join them. And that's what the hell happened. That's why I said, hell no, we ain't going to let no Maddie Icy Hot sit his dusty, rusty ass up on top of there as a quarterback. The hell with that. No. You know, hell no. That's the obvious reason why I would go against it. Well, anyway, the Saints saves another seventy million, seven million by cutting veteran cornerback Denarius Jenkins. Marshawn Lattimore might be looking for a new running mate in twenty twenty one. This is coming from uh, Canal Street Chronicles. Ross Jackson. Saints continue to work their way underneath the newly finalized one eighty two point five, one eighty five point five mil adjusted. Salary cap and doing so, they have to decide to part ways with veteran cornerback Jack Rabbit Jenkins. This is coming from the tweet by Ian Rappaport that basically, uh, you know, laid this out early on to uh, this morning at 7.33 a.m. As you can see, it got a few replies. There's the Saints have informed Jack Rabbit that he's released, that they're releasing him. So it said he was due 11.2 this year with a cap hit of 14.2. Can restructure him. Cut them, put them in the street. I ain't going to pay you 11.2. Uh, and I'm going to free up about $7 million on the cap. But anyway, let's get into that. The cut saved the Saints $7 million against the cap. The Saints have made significant progress knocking their deficit down. But also now it's left without an immediate option opposite Marshawn Lattimo, who the Saints are interested in extending. This is one of the more unexpected cuts for me. We all know that it was an option, especially with the savings, but retaining pieces of the secondary felt like it might be a major emphasis for the Saints. I mean, what gave you that idea, my friend? Perhaps the fact that the Saints tagged Marcus Williams at $10.5 million when they couldn't afford it? Oh, you know, perhaps. That's a good indication, wouldn't it be? Jenkins was claimed off of waivers by New Orleans near the end of the 2019 season, and after he was waived by the Giants following an inappropriate remark on Twitter, Soon after his arrival in the big, which they, it was not a good remark, but it could have been something that was cool, not cleaned up by him apologizing and moving forward. Just like the cat from Florida, the Miami Heat, you know, you say some stupid crap, apologize for it, you know, and then let's move on. You know, do you do? I mean, that's what it is, man. You make a mistake, you do something you ain't supposed to do, apologize for it. And in some cases, like if you run into somebody, call, apologize for it and they come up off that money because you got to fix that. <laughs> You got to make it right. You know, so let's keep it going. But near the end of the 2019 season, after he was waived by the Giants, following an inappropriate mark on Twitter. Soon after his arrival in Big Easy, found his way to the field after some late injuries hit the secondary. He eventually became the team's starting cornerback in 2020, and the Saints moved on from 
uh, for fellow farmer giant Eli Apple. Now, in the last, he made you forget all about Eli Apple. In the last 13, uh, in, in his last games last season, Jenkins had 55 combined tackles, three interceptions, and a touchdown return to open up against his NFC South rival Tampa Bay. He provided the Saints with experience, skill across, uh, across from Lattimore, creating a tandem central to Dennis Allen's defense. After a few years of searching for the right piece across one of their outstanding 2017 draft class selections, Saints also are back to square one or less a reunion between the team and Jenkins were to take place, and I'm thinking they might let the market set the value of him. However, consider some of the accounting measures the Saints took to move on from the 10-year vet. The reunion may not be in the stars. And then, of course, Rappaport put this up here. More fun facts. Since Janoris Jenkins had a 1.2 fully guaranteed roster bonus, it would have accelerated upon being cut, so New Orleans turned it into a signing bonus, spread it out over two years, and saved themselves an additional 600000 against the cap. Now see Mickey Loomis is really shrewd. And I've been saying this, like if you have a signing bonus and you want me to sign a contract, uh, you know, that's 10 million or $20 million and you got a signing bonus of 5 million to entice me to sign that contract. Usually and sometimes you can get used. Okay. I'm going to sign this contract, but I want that 5 million soon as I sign, you know what I'm saying? I want that deposited within the next 24 hours. You know, if, if that's not agreed upon, but, what they're with Mickey Mouse Loomis has been doing a lot lately is he's taking these people signing bonuses and spreading it out just like he's taking their annual money and spreading it out. So the team don't have to come up off that money, you know, which is smart economically for the team. But, you know, I guess the player will have to agree upon that. And that's something that they decided to do. So Janara's got a one point two million dollar pay that Mickey Loomis say, here, I'll give you 600 G's of it. We're talking big blue chips after the uh after the money people take their little tax out Jenkins should have uh have a, he should have a marketing free agency he sits tied with fifth highest total interception touchdowns of all time charts with eight and is a noted ball hawk now this man is a ball hawk he's a ball hawk Janoris Jenkins is a ball hawk let's get that straight both of these traits he put on a full display in New Orleans he finished with two finished 2020 with six pass breakups and only allowed 60 percent catch rate and surrendered only uh, 81.5 passer rating when targeted, according to Pro Football Focus. The Saints are now left with their biggest self-manufactured roster hole with this move. It'll be interesting to see how they address it. Now, do they go to free agency market with the clout of Chris Richard at the head of the defensive backs group? Or do you go out of character and do the circumstances and wait for the draft? Is there a young corner the Saints are ready to give a shot? The world knows the, the world knows I'm ready for keep washing. To in the second to get his opportunity, will 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 more cuts be made to the position group? The Saints can save another two point six million by moving on from another veteran in Patrick Robinson, who actually played very well last season when called in action. That's only a half truth. He didn't play all that well. He had one or maybe one game he played well. Another game he was all right. The majority of the time that man was hurt with hamstring issues. So, I mean, that's the overall, overall in reality. An old cornerback with, with uh, repetitive hamstring issues, he should have been cut before this man was cut. And you're talking about almost $3 million? This man, should, PJ, pa Patrick Robinson, should have been cut off top. So the cornerback position will be a fascinating one to continue to watch as free agency creeps nearer just a handful of days from the team's uh, free agency period. So with that being said, not bad article right here by, my, by Mr. Ross Jackson. Does cover a good deal of of the tops and also lets the, the family members know that that could be the next cut should be the next cut is the three, almost 3 million you save by getting rid of Patrick Robinson. You can't tell me you can't do better. You can do better. You can't do better than Patrick Robinson. So we'll see how it all shakes, man, on the back end of this thing. Let's move to the next article. And we got Quan Alexander writes farewell message to the saints on Instagram release with free, uh, free up $13 million. Let's get into it. This is provided by Mr. Luke Johnson. It seems a far gone conclusion when the New Orleans Saints acquired Quan Alexander in the midseason trade last year, that he would not return in 2021, gifting, given his hefty price tag and the Saints' imminent salary cap situation. It appears that that may now be a reality as Alexander shared what looks like to be a farewell message from his Instagram account Thursday afternoon. He said in the message, hashtag, I mean, uh, quote, thanks uh, at Saints for giving me an opportunity to showcase my talents, Alexander wrote. Uh, quote, everything was live. Let's see what happens next. End quote. So Alexander's release with free 13 men in the cap for the Saints, pushing it much closer to cap solvency over the cap. Of course, you got seven from Jack Rabbit. You got 13 from 
uh, Alexander eventually when it happens. That's 20 between the two. So over the cap had the Saints at about 25 million over the 185.5 adjusted salary after clearing Alexander cornerback Janoris Jenkins salary cap book. So it's saying just over 25 million between those guys, and that's already thrown in the mixture. Alexander had two remaining on his four-year deal, 54 million contract that he signed with the Niners ahead of the 2019 season, but none of the money in the final two years were guaranteed, making it a simple decision for the Saints. Uh, you know, all save is no cap charge, psh, put him in the street. This does not necessarily spell the end of Alexander's time in New Orleans. No, it doesn't. Smart Money says that he comes back on a cheaper one-year deal, and I agree with that. Acquired from the 49ers with a conditional draft pick for Alonzo, who never played a down for the Niners, Alexander played at least 74% of the defensive snaps four of his first six games with the Saints. He was knocked down drag out, to be honest with you. He provided energy and playmaking to boost the Saints' defense, forced two fumbles and recover another. He looked like DeMario's, uh, literally DeMario's image out there, his mirror image, moving around, jumping around, you know, you know, you know, all the things that he was doing, covering sideline to sideline. He just really, really good moves. So hopefully, with the smart money says he's coming back, I'm with that. But as season ended in a bit of disappointment, he suffered that Achilles injury in week 16 against the Vikings. It marked the fourth consecutive season he played 12 or fewer games because of injury. Alexander could be ready to return to the field around the time training camps opened this summer. So a little information right there to let the family members know, okay, if Quine is ready to go, when will it be? We could be possibly looking, like the man said, around training camp. So the Saints will bring him in, give him a, give him a, uh, uh, a uh, physical, and all things, you know, work out a one year deal friendly to the team. We'd love to see Quan Alexander come back. And of course, if you don't know by now, the Houston Texans reaching a D uh, agreement with Mark Ingram, former Saints running back. Mark Ingram is now a Houston Texans. For those who did know that, what's up, Travis? Big ups to you. Good to see you in the chat. Much love. And for the family members that didn't know, that's right. Mark Ingram is with the Texans. So for people who wanted to see Mark come back to New Orleans, forget about it. Baltimore running back Mark Ingram has reached an agreement, a one-year deal worth about $3 million with the Texans. Ingram will join a Texan backfield led by starter David Johnson, who agreed to restructure his contract to remain with the team. The Texans released pass catching running back Duke Johnson earlier this season. Ingram was a healthy scratch for four of the Ravens games final five contests of the 2020 season, including both playoff games were released in January. Pro Bowl player in 2019, Ingram didn't have the same explosiveness last season and was slowly phased out of the Ravens game plan. Finishing with a career low, 72 carries, Baltimore ended with the number one rushing attack in the NFL by relying on J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. Also, you could throw in uh, uh, Lamar Jackson, who helps pad those running stats too. So Ingram, a first round pick by the Saints in 2011, spent his first eight seasons in New Orleans and reached the Pro Bowl in 2014. And in 17, he signed a three year deal worth 15 million with Baltimore in 2019, immediately injecting high energy and leadership into the locker room. Ingram, 31, gained 1,018 yards and scored 10 touchdowns in his first season with the Ravens. Champion um, uh, Lamar Jackson's run for MVP by exclaiming, Big Trust. In the post news conference, uh, teammates have explained that big trust means that trust and faith, a phrase that says, got your back. Heisman Trophy winner Ingram was selected 28th overall by the Saints in the 2011 draft. He finished 7,324 yards and 62 touchdowns and has 260 receptions for 1895 and 10. 10 touchdown receptions in 10 seasons. So there you go, family. Thank you, brother Dollar, for your super chat, fam. Much love. Appreciate you. Uh, for your super chat, and brother Dollar says, Big Q, I see Jeff Ireland was at the Clemson Pro Day. Wonder who he has his eye on. Him. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Good good point there, brother Dollar. Uh, we're just going to have to maintain and see. Who that to your Morgan? Thank you for the super chat to that, brother Dollar. Much love, fam. So for those who didn't know, uh, Texans signed Mark Ingram. That's right. Former Saint running back Mark Ingram to a one year deal today. Now, also to go over some stuff, I, you know, I'll use one of my favorite resources here, which is sport track. And currently what I got set up here is some of the totals of where the Saints according with sport track is telling you 
where they're located right now, which is, as you can see, 32 million, according to SportTrack currently. The Saints are uh, 32.9 in the red of the cap right now. For those who want to know, who that to you, Kenny? Who that to you, Kenny Sutton? Beware of the daggles. Who that to you, fam? Good to see you in the chat. Much love. Says we got to go young and dumb. <laughs> well, hopefully young and smart, you know, hopefully a little smart. What's up, uh, uh, what's that, Patrice? What's going on, fam? Who that to you? Good to see you in the chat. Much love, fam. All right, so with that being said, fam, uh, let's keep it rolling, man. 32.9 is where they're at. And this is, like I said, this is Sport Track, who covers all things uh, money-wise with NFL teams, NBA teams. So what I wanted to do, you know, I, I'm good at doing these exercises that kind of help show, you know, you know, how what's going on with the team in terms of um, – the cap situation and these little exercises show us like I, like I took uh, uh, the cap from 72 million at one time down to like a 15 million. Uh, to, I took the team into the black in one of these little exercises from 70 million. Now, of course, 32.9. Some saying around 28 million is where the Saints are now. Who that to you, Shedrick? Good to see you in the chat, fam. Much love. And what's going on uh, quite simply is this 32.9 Saints are really close. Now, there are guys that we can work on right here. Now, as you can see at the top of it, we got a 2021 cap figure of 18.8. That's Michael Thomas right there. Why haven't they talked to Michael Thomas? Well, like I said at the start of the show, you got to be agreeable to a contract restructuring. Perhaps Mike isn't. Perhaps Mike wants all of his money and not to have it restructured. You know, so that's a part of it. But let's say he did. Let's say all of these guys on his team did. Let's have a little fun here with this tool right here to show to get that 32.9. I took it from 70, almost 80 million one time. So 32.9 shouldn't be that hard, right? Okay, so let's restructure Michael Thomas's base salary, right? He's at 18.8. Let's restructure. Now, as you can see, the transaction log is going to spill to the right here. And what we're showing that is I restructured Mike Thomas and got $8.7 million in savings that hit that cap. So as you can see, that was eight point seven. You see the savings, and it dropped it from what the 30-plus it was to 24, right? So there is no restructure option for Teron Armstead. We can either trade him. You got $16 million, fam. $16 million, and his contract expires next year in 2021. Now, of course, you can restructure the cap figure for Teron Armstead, or a uh, trade him, you know, if you trade him. Now, a lot of people say, Q, we don't want to trade him. So I ain't going to make nobody mad today. I'm going to just say, okay, he, oh, he got 16.2 on the 20 cap. Let's, let's, let's cut that in half and make it $8 million. Give him $8 million, right? All right? So with that do, that gives me $8 million right here, right? That saves me. Now I'm down to minus 16. So what I pretty much did what Teron Armstead is that I cut his salary in half and went from the 16 to the eight. And I took 10 off of Michael Thomas for a cap saving of 8.7. So that's two moves. And we had 16 minus 16. Okay. Taysom Hill. Well, Latasha says, Hey, let's restructure him. Well, let's restructure uh, Taysom Hill 16. That's too much, right? Not re let, let's, let's work on that. So we had 16 would be a feasible rate. Let's say we cut that in half from 16 to 8. Let's say we do half of that, right? Okay, there's 8 for Taysom with a cap savings of 8. We're minus 8 now, okay? And then, of course, Jackrabbit right here with the 13.6, they cut him, so let me cut him. Let me release him too. So if I release him, as you can see, that puts 17, that puts 7 up there. Look at us now, fam. We minus 600K right now. Right. All right. Now, what do we do now, Q? Well, what we can do now is we got two people we can work on right here. Mr. Ryan Ramchek and uh, Laddie Daddy. Right. So what we'll do here, this option don't provide like a figure where you can actually extend them. So what I'll do is let's say we each gave them a deal of four years apiece. The initial base salary for the 2021. So it, the cap hit for the 2021 salary. Let's say. I cut it down and it's like a step pyramid. The first year is two years. 
The next year is five years. The next year is eight years. And then a big chunk on the fourth year, similar to like how Mickey Loomis like to do his contracts. He likes to step pyramid them. You, you see what I'm saying? So with that being said, let's see. Let's say we cut that down on his initial agreement and he gets two million on that open year. Well, we signed nine million. Look where we are now. Eight plus we're in the black again, fam. We're in the black. We're now plus eight. Let's hit ladder more. Same way. Let's say you do, they're trying to give him two. Let's say we work ladder daddy down to 02. Right? That's eight on his. Look at we had minus six. We plus 16 now, fam. We're plus 16 million, just like that. But I had to restructure Mike Thomas. He had to be in my scenario, my exercise. Mike Thomas, Teron Arms, all these guys are agreeable to remakings of their deals. So what I did, and you can see what I did right here, which was, this is easy because I remember that damn thing was up at over 80 million and I had to chop it down and still got a surplus of like my, a plus 15. So we should see Mickey Loomis get this team down. And I've said like over several transactions. Uh, and, and if you cut the right people, it should count as such. Now, Let's go on down here. Now we see Mike Thomas here and all these guys, and we're going to scroll on down here. Now, as you can see right here, where are you at? Where are you at? There he is. And this is Patrick Robinson. We talk about, is he among the 51 contracts that the Saints are going to count? Well, you can see, and of course, this answers Brother Tragic's question about what Q, where's Patrick Robinson? Is he in the top 51? Well, if we go all the way down to 51, the 51 contract, according to this list, stops at Keith Washington. Bear in mind that all of these guys are on this team. Currently, all these guys, well, a few of these guys, you can actually cut a few of these guys that ain't on this, that's on this team. Who, what players that we did really, okay, we redid JT Gray. Uh, somebody else we had put in the street. Let me see. Let me make sure. Okay, they already did Andrus. Malcolm Brown. Let's say Malcolm Brown. We can't trade Malcolm Brown. Let's say we release Malcolm Brown. You get 1.5 on Malcolm. Where's Patrick Robinson's ass so I can get rid of him too? Where you at? You ain't gonna hide on here. All right, here you go. It's Patrick Robinson right there at 18. Put him in the street, save 1.2 according to this. And then, of course, Latavius Murray, who they trying to trade. Let's say they can't trade him. They'll put him in the street as well. You get 1.7. Even though I want to keep Latavius, I would like to keep Latavius and simply restructure him, which you'll save some money there. But in the end, they trying to get rid of him, so let's just do what they do. And we put him in the street. So as you can see, it took me nine transactions, but look where the Saints money is now. We're at 26, fam. We're plus 26. But that's if you restructure Michael Thomas's agreement, and he's agreeable to it. That's if you got the extensions going because a lot you can free up about 18 million between well, I ain't gonna go that far, but about 15 million. Of monies, if you go two years, two million on the first two years, uh, uh, first years of the restructured or extension contracts of Ramcheck and Lattimore. Let's say Step Pyramid model puts two million on the first year. That cap figure that they're sitting currently at 18 million. Let's say you get 15 million savings once those extensions are finalized. That's 15 million right there. Do you come in, release uh, Patrick Robinson? You get rid of Malcolm Brown by releasing because it's doubtful that these guys will actually be traded. Let me say that again because I said this on the TSC Q&A live show. And Kevin says, Q, you called it. Sent me a message saying, Q, you called it by Emmanuel Sanders. You called it. I said, it wasn't hard to call, my brother, because the Saints want to trade Sanders. They want to trade Sanders. They want to trade Latavius. They want to trade Brown. But the reality is if I was a general manager, just call me GMQ. And the Saints told me, I like, I got these guys on the trade block if you want them. You know what I would think? I would say, okay, thank y'all for letting me know that they're on the trade block. Thank you very much. And I would hang up the phone and say, you know what I'll say? Once I get off that phone, I'm going to just sit here and wait till the 15th, uh, you know, between the 15th and 17th, because I know y'all are, are desperate. Sooner or later, you're going to cut them guys and put them on the street. So why would I offer you a pick for somebody I can get from you from the, uh, off the free agency Why that I know you're going to release in a few days? You see? Just commonsensical. But anyway, pertaining to what we're seeing here with the Saints, order for this stuff to actually work. We got to recut. We, I, I cut down Michael Thomas, which was a big one. Mike was making $18.8 million according to these numbers. I reduced it in half and saved us about $8.7 on his restructure just for this year, right? 
Let's look at what I did with Tyron Armstead. Instead of releasing Tyron, who had a big fat contract, what I did was I simply cut his salary in half. And instead of having 16, I went eight and saved eight. That boosted us up. The Taysom Hill 16.1 the Saints arm. I merely cut the contract in half and gave him eight million, freed up eight million. The Jack Rabbit Jenkins release and freeze up 7.6 mil. The restructurings of both Ryan Ramchek and Lattimore, in which I gave them a $2 million base salary for the 2021 season, freed up between the both of those guys. Uh, you might it freed up uh, $17 million in savings, fam. That was a big chunk right there. So in essence, if the Saints, they could have kind of worked, try to work with something with Jack Rabbit, I imagine. But the real big meat and potato deals that's going to save double digit millions will be the restructuring of Ramcheck and Lattimore because currently they, they count 20 million, 21 million against the current cap. The extensions extends out. You can free up about I, my model has right here about 15 to 16 million that I got on those guys. And of course, I released Malcolm Brown, who I couldn't trade with for a relief for a bonus of four point nine million. And then Patrick Robinson, which I got 2.6 million back on. All of that culminates in a plus $26 million situation, which means then that I can then go into free agency and sign Jameis or, and get cheap veterans to come in and help. With $26 million, the Saints can make something stuff work. Remember going back to 2014, 2017, I always tend to do that. Remember we go back to 2017, the Saints had $14 million uh, north of the cap that year. They were $14 million in the black with the cap. And people were telling me uh, that, Q, we couldn't do nothing about that. It was 20, you know, 2017, Q, we ain't got no money. I said, listen, we're going to make some stuff happen. Remember who they signed that year. They signed, in that year when they signed Latavius Murray, they signed Latavius Murray, Nick Easton, Mario Edwards Jr., Malcolm Brown, Latavius Murray, Marcus Shrells, and then later on, they picked up Jerry Cook. Y'all remember that? And that's why I was telling the family members, I was like, listen, the way they participate in the cap is, is in, in the cap is, is irresponsible. Let's just keep it real. Mickey Loomis is an irresponsible money manager. This is pretty much what this is. We're giving them uh, props for being underhanded with the contracts because really there's only one way to handle money. There's only one real uh, prosperous and logical way to handle a budget. You do it the right way. You keep the bills and you keep everything in the black. The moment you run into the red, you know you have issues. But we've been kicking the can down the line for so long. Hopefully we have a bit of strategy difference this year as we have an opportunity to kind of build it the right way. As opposed to, okay, we got we got to get up under that. Once we get up under that, let's stay from getting out of the way by making smart draft choices, which we've been hitting on junk in the draft lately. But really what's been protecting us is the fact that the undrafted guys have been outperforming the drafted guys. Think about that. Think about that. You got guys like Marquez Calloway on the team. Where the drafted guys at? We know that Marquez Calloway for many sl- uh, and Deontay Harris, those guys at a degree was outperforming Traquan Smith, who himself is a third round draft pick. See what I'm saying? So and you'll see the same thing happen before when you see guys that are undrafted that on the team that are cheaper uh, options that are playing really good role player role plays for us. You got guys, undrafted guys all over the goddamn team. You got them on the offensive line. You got them on the defensive line. You got them on the line in the linebacker room. You got them in the corner in the secondary room. You got them as wide receivers. The ultimate poster boy, the poster child for undrafted guys is Deontay Harris, who himself was an undrafted guy who became an all star a pro bowler for the Saints. So he's the ultimate undrafted uh, guy to this scenario, to, for this example, for this exercise. So with that being said, once again, family, we, you know, with my little tool right here, I was able to then take the Saints out of the 30 something million dollars that they were worth. And now we are plus 26 in the black. Now we can sign draft picks. Now that we can maybe get up a couple of role people, we can get Jameis up in here if we want him. We might be able to add a wide receiver if we want to in the fringe. You know, might be able to pick up a, a veteran, young veteran defensive uh, interior pass rush if we want. We might be able to get a cornerback or two smartly from the uh, cheaper uh, experienced veterans from free agency if we smart. You know, with $26 million, you looking good right there. But a lot of that came from Mike Thomas. Do they touch Mike? They have not yet. So we'll see. 
But anyway, let's let's go back over and summarize. OK, I covered the Saints save another seven million by cutting veteran cornerback Janoris Jenkins. We covered that as well. We even used this as a reference article article of where that came from. Ian Rappaport's original tweet. And then, of course, we went over Quine Alexander, uh, his article and what he was saying, his message on Instagram about farewell. I don't think he'll be going for long, my friend. I think he'll be back. And then also ultimately, Houston Texans signed Mark Ingram to a deal. That's right, family. Mark Ingram is now with Houston Texans. For those who wanted to see Mark uh, come back in, you know, with the Elvin Kamara and the Saints, it won't happen, at least for right now. Perhaps maybe they release him in the season. You never know. But for as of right now, Mark Ingram is a Houston Texan. And of course, we went over our little exercise right here. Well, this, and, and, and let me put this on the 2 S Sport Track family. These are real numbers. And Sport Track has a reputation of having the real cap numbers per time, you know, real time. The real salaries, the real cap impacts, all of that. That's why I use Sport Track. It's a wonderful tool to kind of explain this. And I know not too many people go over that. But it, it helps a lot to explain the economics of what Mickey Loomis doing as simply just reading the black and white articles and word for word of what he's saying. It, it fits so much better when you're able to then show people from a numbers perspective exactly how these things can end up where they are or aren't. So with that being said, that's why a lot of people got love for the sports cone, man. We actually take time to look at this stuff and study it like you're supposed to do it. You know, that's how I look at it anyway. So anyway, family, listen, man, that we just hit on 60 minutes, man. How about that? Just hit on 60 minutes in the building. Much love to the great Saint thing, thing, the black, the black and gold family members in the live stream. What's happening with you? And I'm going to answer a few questions and concerns, family. Remember, tomorrow on our Friday free for all show, uh, we shall answer the questions. We'll open up the lines of communication. We'll have a Friday free for all like we did last Friday. A lot of people really enjoyed the last Friday show and my, my, I myself did too. Black Suede will be in the building too. I want to say he'll, he'll pop up in there as well and join us as well. And we'll take all kinds of calls. We had a five hour show. I won't say last Friday, you know, but I must certainly, I must, and I got to be real family. I must certainly have to do a better job of kind of getting more people in there. Uh, people was waiting a little longer than what they were supposed to. And that's on me. I got to kind of get people in, let them express themselves and they kind of move them along so other people can get an opportunity so it can be fairer. You know, so can't, I can't let them just sit on the line like that, you know, but you get somebody like Willie and Willie is so animated, man. <laughs> Willie be dropping his knowledge and everything, man. But Willie's a fun dude to listen to. And a lot of family members are, man. So I want to give you your time without feeling like you're rushed. I want you to be able to express yourself and uh, communicate to the rest of the great same thing tank. So I have to definitely get a little better with that. And I most certainly will try to do that. So with that being said, I'd like to thank all the big, the black and gold family members and the great same uh, think tank and the builder NOG supremacy. Big ups to you says we'll show in 2022 because that's going to be a problem. All right. Uh, thank you. NOG and welcome to the stream. My friend, thank you for being here today. All right, who else we got? Uh, any questions, concerns, or comments, family? Throw them in there, and I'll read them over the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes or so, and we'll get to it. Brother Paul says, yeah, Big Q, Mickey is going to get fired for all those foolish contracts over the years. Facts. Well, not so much, my friend. Uh, accountability uh, seems to escape people in that hemisphere. <laughs> so if you're Drew Bree, if you're uh, not Drew, but if and part of it is to... But if you're Sean Payton or Mickey Loomis, you know, you know, I'm not going to hold you accountable if you don't hold me. How about that? That's a two way sword when we start demanding uh, you to do me right. You know what I'm saying? That shouldn't be a prerequisite, a prerequisite of anything. You do me right now. Do you right? You know, no, no. Even if you do me wrong, I'm going to do you right, because eventually I'm going to do your right. you do your ass right up out of here. <laughs> you're going to you're going to you're going to get yourself done. You're going to cook yourself. I mean, it's commonsensical, but, you know, we just have to watch it. It's very entertaining, to be honest with you. But it's almost borderline uh, borders uh, a cartoon reality. It really does, because there, you know, you can't operate like this for long stretches of time. And I think a lot of times the Saints begin away with this really um, irresponsible cap management due to the fact that we are operating well in the draft to a degree. Well, the last few drafts are not look, you know, it's not looking that good. We're not getting good value out of. The last few drafts like we were, but we a lot of people not paying attention because they're looking at Elvin Kamara. They look, look at all these good players, Q. But that was years ago that you got those guys in that draft. How many guys you're hitting on now? 
Most of the guys that are coming on the team now are guys that you're hitting on because they're undrafted guys. And the undrafted guys are stepping up and stepping out. So, you know, we, we got to clean that up. But I don't think nothing happens to Mickey Loomis. Like, I don't think happen, nothing happened to Sean Payton. It's just not enough people that think like you, Brother Paul. And when they get enough of them, they better watch out. I tell you what. Travis Jones. What's up, Travis? Is we've been trash cannon draft picks. I know, bro. And I've been saying that for a while. I'm trying to get people to understand that, boy, it's the hardest thing in the world to get uh, to get the black and gold, not all of them, but some of the black and gold people to understand, man, I don't know what, you know, reality you living in right now, but we have not been doing very well in these drafts. And really what's fooling you is the fact that the undrafted guys are outplaying the drafted guys. If we've been irresponsible with the draft, we wouldn't have needed to commit so, so much money to free agency if we was hitting on the draft, you know, like we supposed to. And uh, that's a major part of it. You know, the draft that you, you utilize the draft, but see a lot of times too. to see the thing is, if you play the draft game, see a big part of playing the draft game is this. When you play the draft game, you got a four or five year window to hit on something big, a four or five year window. If you get a Super Bowl out of that four or five window and you have those spectacular drafts, then you can see people start peeling away. Your, your team stays strong. Now, now, I'm not saying you're supposed to have a 70 or 80 percentile hit range on the draft because it is a lottery system. It's pretty much gambling. You know, it's like gaming at the casino. You don't know. You do the homework the best you can do. And you pick you got to pick a guy who you think can play your style of system. You don't get a a uh, a wildcat quarterback to play in a pro spread defense. And you, he's going to have problems. You know, he's wild because he's not used to being under center. I mean, there's certain things that you got to factor in when you're looking at players that in the schemes that they're playing, because no system, no offensive system or defensive system that's out there is, is something that somebody's doing that it's not being done before. Let's get that straight. All of the stuff or the offensive systems that you see, whether they're defense or offense, somebody at the college level or using it or even at the high school level are using the same style of systems. So a, a good smart coach would look for players who are familiar with their system or have the intelligence, who are highly intelligent to be able to pick up what they do so the curb is not that long because you don't want to have a long curb to get a return on a player that you're looking to hit on in the second year. That's what happened with uh, Traquan Smith. And also – you have to make sure you don't play these guys out of position and destroy their confidence because I've seen that happen to several Saints draft picks. You draft Rick Leonard fourth with the fourth round pick and then you get Natrell Jamerson and Kareem Moore in that draft. And then ultimately what happens is you cut Rick Leonard, Kareem Moore, and Natrell Jamerson in the same year. Now what happened? The fact is Sean Payton them tried to turn a cornerback into a safety and a safety into a cornerback. Why? Why? And then when they don't pick it up, you put them in the street. Why? Don't that, that Ain't that what the practice squad fought? But he didn't put them on the practice squad. How did you mess up that bad with three consecutive draft picks? And if you go look at the current drafts, it's a similar process. This current draft, why would you go and take a gamble on that Stevens kid from Mississippi State who they called him Taysom. And the question I kept asking people, you can go back and listen, is why the hell you guys are looking at Taysom Hill clones? Why? Why are we looking at Taysom Hill clones when we need to be looking at Drew Brees clones? Was it, you know, and that, and that shocked them. A lot of people got shocked in their head. Like, shit, that's, <laughs> that's true. Well, yeah, you don't want no Taysom Hill clone because if you get a guy that's a Taysom Hill clone, the guy ain't going to be a perfect throwing quarterback. He'll run all around up and down the field for you. Yeah, he'll do that for you. But when it comes down to throwing the ball consistently and accurately, he's going to struggle like hell. And that's what that kid did. And Peyton said, you know what? He'll taste me and then turn the man into a tight end. And then after he couldn't play the tight end position, he put him in the street. And he did all of that to keep him away from Carolina. And then he put him in the street and guess who picked, guess who picked him up and guess who he playing for right now? Hmm? You want to guess? And that cost the Saints draft picks to just to go and do that dumb shit. So like I'm saying, now you up here cutting everybody, cutting everybody, everybody card. You sitting up here cutting everybody card off. 
You in there with a at wall. You got a sharp ass ex swinging at anybody within the vicinity. But then it, Mickey Luma swinging like he a scared teenager in the scary movie. I mean, it's just crazy. But see, if you're drafting correctly, then you're using the draft. You can be able to get talent and you don't have to debase your whole team. The Emmanuel Sanders move is it was a Super Bowl or bust move. And when you do that, you cut the team down and you not only are you cut in contract, but please understand this family. Not only are you cutting the contracts of these players to free up money, but you also getting rid of immense talent off of your team. Malcolm Brown is your starting nose tackle. You about to get rid of him. Latavius Murray is your backup running back. You about to get rid of him. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders is already in the street. You know, he was your second best wide receiver last year. Jared Cook was already a free agent, so he don't count. But Josh Hill was a very valuable tight end backup for the Saints who've been here for years. You know? Now, as in the case of Tommy Morstead, you do have his, his replacement on the team. But that's not the same everywhere. You see? It's not the same everywhere. So... We'll see, man. We'll see. I, I see. I see what you're saying. Tragic. I got you, brother. I got you. I got you. I'm following. You. I, I see what you put down there. But what my thing is this, man. We're going to see how it all shakes when it's all said and done. High Booster says, can we expect Taysom contract to be restructured? Armstead cut Brown, perhaps. Brown is on the way to get cut. Armstead, I don't know what they're going to do with him because truth be told, the Armstead and Mike Thomas stuff should have been approached before you got to the Jackrabbit. But there's no way the Saints are going to be on the hook for $14 million from the Jackrabbit. The only thing that was called for was a restructuring. You don't want to lose the Jackrabbit. You don't. It didn't cost you nothing to get him. I mean, you put in a freaking waiver claim and got him when nobody else wanted him. And you got a guy that was your best cornerback last year. Played his ass off. So maybe they go back him at, at free agency. Maybe not. You know, this is a precarious situation. But you want to retain as much talent as you can the right way. And, of course, the Saints don't have no problem putting $10 million stamp on um, uh, on, on Marcus Williams. But you put uh, – we'll see how it all shapes in the end, man. Try says, remember, Q, you can only restructure a contract a minimum of two times. I know that's true, bro. That's true. And you saying that about Tyron, correct, bro? That's, tr that's true. Well, if that's the case, there's only two options, right, Brother Tragic? What, if you can only restructure uh, Tyron Armstead, and that's, that's a fact. If you can only structure him, restructure the current deal twice. If he got a, 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 a one deal now, you know, and of course, it's not like his contract ended. The Saints simply just restructured his deal or extended his contract out. So two times. So if that's the case, I think they used it two times on Teron Armstead. Matter of fact, I know they did. So if that's the case, there's only two things you can do with him. Either let him rock with his money currently, which shouldn't be the case, or either trade him. And I kept saying, pe telling people that the other day. We might have to come up off him. No, nah, Q, we can't get rid of Terron. Why not? We're getting everybody else. Why not? Terron Armstead's money is not feasible. And tell your GM to don't tag guys when you're still in the red. If you want Terron Armstead, you tag him Marcus Williams. That money got to come from somewhere. It got to. Thank you for that, uh, Tragic. Appreciate you. All right. Uh, Seabrook says, yeah, it's going down last Friday. Uh, Paul says, if Mickey Loomis ever get audited, <laughs> uh, he going straight to jail. All right. Cameron says, Torres Shepard, thank you. All right. The, Roy, what's up, Roy? He says, are we allowed to trade Marcus Williams? Oh, no, you're not. You tagging him. You you tagged you tagged Marcus Williams. And, I'm, and like I told the family members yesterday when we did our Marcus Williams breakdown that they didn't stipulate was it wh whether it was exclusive or non-exclusive, but it's probably a non-exclusive tag, which allows him to go out and talk to people. And if uh, he finds somebody that wants him, then they'll say, we want to sign you. And if the Saints say, OK, we'll match it, you know, Saints have the opportunity they can match it or not. If the Saints choose not to match the deal that Marcus Williams went and found, then the team who's tr who's signing him will have to give the Saints two first round draft picks two first round draft picks which you can see very few people are willing to give up two first round draft picks for marcus williams but what it does also do is it's like i said before it poisons the well for teams that want marcus williams because 
Nobody's going to go and try to sign Marcus Williams on a non-exclusive on a uh, a non-exclusive franchise tag because they have to surrender two first round draft picks, you know, in consecutive years. So you got this year and next year that we have to give up for Marcus Williams. So nobody's going to come close to him on that. And then on top of that, what it does is it locks the Saints into for at least this year, uh, forcing him to play at that cap tag of 10.5. Issue with the players is they don't like to be tagged because if you're holding them at 10.5, you're poisoning the well for anybody to come over there and drink from where he is. So he's not going to get very much, if any, you know, you might have one stupid GM might, might see his value is that high, but he himself sees himself as a 13 to $14 million uh, uh, free, uh, safety. He sees himself. So when the, the Saints tagged him, they basically screwed him they, for at least this year anyway, and basically trying to force him to sign an extension with them uh, at the at the number. So you're looking at 10 a million a year or something like that. The Saints are not going to go higher than it. So they basically forcing Marcus Williams to accept anything but tw- probably between 10 and 11 million a season. He wants 13 to 14. And I promise you, if you didn't tag him, he would get that much money. He would get at least 12, 13, 14 million more than what the Saints are going to pay him. You know, so Saints poisoned the well on Marcus Williams. That question, my next question is how does Marcus take that? Because he don't have to sign that tag. You know, he has all the way, I believe, to July sometime before that tag, that tag deadline is, and he would have to either sit out the season. He's not forced to sign that tag now. He can sit out the season if he was going, but does he do that? You know, that's the next question on on this uh and see how it all shakes. So it could be quite the thing. That's why a lot of people don't like to get tagged, because it keeps you away from the money that you know you can make on the open market, which is the main reason why Sean Payton them tagged him. Because they know he was going to get the 13. You, you ain't see him tag Trey Hendrickson. You ain't see him tag Jameis. Because they know on the open market, Jameis, they can they can let the market dictate the value of Jameis. They know what it's going to be for Jameis Winston. They know that the market for Trey Hendrickson, for you to tag him that way, is that the tag market, tagging him is more expensive than what the market is going to be in case of Hendrickson and, and, and Jameis Winston. If you go look up what the tag is, if you tag Hendrickson, it's like north of $15 million. Ain't nobody going to pay $15 million a season for Trey Hendrickson. He get ten, he might get 10, maybe 12, but not no 15 with the tag is worth. But when it came down to the safety position, the tag on the year is, is say, saying 10.5, but people who know the cap saying it's closer to 11 million. So the Saints feel comfortable with giving Marcus 10, 11 million. The only other question to that, that, that answer or that statement is, does Marcus Williams take that money as opposed to the 13, 14 that he wants? That's up for the debate. All right, let's keep it going. Travis said we should we should have tr- uh, made Fontenot the GM and sent Luma State. <laughs> hey, man, hey, you're welcome to welcome to the press conference, everybody. This is Mickey Loomis. I just wanted to tell you guys that uh, today we made the decision to um, you know I'm gonna say the ter- the Terry Fontenot is gonna be the new GM of the team. Where you going, Mickey? Where you going? Well, uh, you know, uh, you know, guys. I, I really enjoy my time with you guys, and I'm heading to the Atlanta Falcons. What? You going to Atlanta, Mickey? Yeah, I'm going to Atlanta. Right, you sound kind of sad there, Mickey. What's going on? Well, you see, guys, I just came, I just got so close to you guys over the years, and you know, I was feeling good about the decisions I was doing, and then one day, I somebody sent me a, a link. And it was just, it was just it was these people, man. They just really got to me, and it changed my mind. Well, who was it, Mickey? Who are you talking about? Who who changed the mind, Mickey? Well, it's these guys. It's from the Great Say Think Tank, and they was and then they they made me see things in a different light. So I, I'm going to take my responsibility to Atlanta and screw up their world. All right, Mickey, have a nice day. Appreciate you. Where's the partner? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, everybody. Just, welcome to the press conference, everybody. Yeah, it sounds like Mickey is, you know, that's, it took me a while to work on my Mickey, man. I got, I got a good show on Peyton, too. I ain't going to get that to y'all right now. I'm still working on that. <laughs> oh, you got to say, you got to say, welcome to the press conference, everybody. <laughs> oh, y'all going to learn one day. I'm a comedian. Y'all going to learn. All right, let's keep it going, man. Big ups, man. Thank you. 
All right, C. Brook, what's up, fam? He said, yeah, it's going down last Friday. Yeah, we, bro, we going, I'm going to promise I'm going to do a little bit better, get the family members in there, man. A lot of family members, a lot of great commentary, too. All right, but to answer your, your question on that, Roy, uh, no, you, you can't trade them. You can get picks for them eventually if somebody want them. You know what I'm saying? The issue is, is anybody going to take them? Travis says, we should have made font. No, yeah, thank you, Travis. Appreciate that. Dada says, in my opinion, that cap crap came down from Drew Age and that so-called Super Bowl run three to four years. Yeah, bro. We plan, we plan, we really plan, we plan paying the price for that right now, aren't we? Latasha says, last good, she says, last good late draft player we got was David Onyemata. I'm going to be real. Yes, indeed. Good call. Paul said, yeah, Q, the Saints have not have great drafts in history. With the last several drafts, we could have did a lot better, man. I think we just got a little swollen headed and thinking, you know, yeah, we the big bad stuff and then you know, we got to do better. Now the Saints trying to trade talented veterans for something else. So, John, uh, thank you for that, fam. John says, uh, hold on here. I don't want to skip nobody. Inevitable says, no doubt Cam sucks when your head is pounding or Advil. John Thompson said, Big Q, will uh, Loomis dare touch Michael Thomas's contract? I, bro, that would have been the first thing I did. That, let me ask him why he's still in the building. Hey, Mickey, you still back there? Can you come up here? John won't ask you a question. About uh, Cam Jordan's contract. I, I know, man. I know you don't want to talk about it. Can you come in and talk? Just act. Just, you still here. You ain't left nowhere. Come on. All right. Here you go. Well, we went in. well, I'm back, family. What do you guys want? Well, Mickey, they was asking about, you know, will you touch Michael Thomas's contract? Well, you know, well, we like Mike a lot. And, uh, you know, it's up to Mike. You know, we just got to be able to do it the right way. That's all I can say to you. I got to go my Ubers here, Q. All right, Mike, Mickey, thank you. Appreciate you showing up on the show. Thank you, Mickey. <laughs> Mickey got to leave. You got an Uber outside waiting for him. <laughs> uh, where else can you go to get uh, Mickey Loomis impressions? <laughs> Nobody does Mickey Loomis impersonations. Come on now. Y'all know. <laughs> Nobody does Mickey Loomis in persons, man, impressions, or actually any ones that's any good, you know, or, or, or silly enough to try. <laughs> uh, eternal big ups to you, fam. Thank you for your super chat says this needs to be Mickey Loomis's greatest performance. I know, bro. It, it is, bro. He chopping it down, man. We ain't see nothing yet. All right. Thank you, family. Michael, what's up, fam? Says we got to stop acting like the sky is falling. Mike say the sky is falling. Sky ain't falling, Mike. The sky is not falling. The sky, but then again, think about it like this. Maybe you need to get a little er, a more sense of urgency in your, in your spill, brother. Maybe you might be a little too calm, relax. You know, when you say the sky isn't falling, your team sitting up there 70, 80 goddamn million dollars in the hole and the sky ain't falling. You cutting all your veterans off and the sky ain't falling. Maybe we need to rethink this thing. Huh? But the reality is at the end of the day, it's commonsensical if you really appreciate it, you know, to be honest with you, Michael. You know, we knew that we was pushing all our chips to the table for Super Bowl or bust and we got busted. And this is a result of getting busted. You know, we have to get rid of all our people. So to a degree, yeah, the sky is falling. And people are reacting because they're saying people that are solid players for the team are in the streets. Your team is still $30 million in the hole. And you got six days left to get there. And we're going to see what that looks like. So, I mean, at the end of the day, man, you know, to a degree, you know, you got to look at it and say, man, we are irresponsible with the cap. Ain't no doubt about it, you know, because not everybody's sitting up that $80 million in the hole. They got like three or four teams. But we're worse than everybody because we've been, you know, been we've been doing very dysfunctional and di irresponsible cap management. You know, we've been balancing the budget incorrectly because after all of that, all of that balanced budging and all of that pushing the chips to the table. How many Super Bowls did that get you over the last four years? Not a damn thing. So when you when you critical think about it and that's what we do. That's why I look at that's why I look at I don't too much. And I'm gonna be honest with you, Mike. I don't too much really pay attention to a lot of other stuff because a lot of these other people out here, you know, except for the ones I really, I really mess with, you know what I'm saying? My dog TJ, a lot of these other people, 
you know, it's a lot, uh, it, not all of them, but it, things have been kind of on the change since the sports coma been on there because you we we it's you can't be regular with the coma around. You just you just can't. Too many people watch the show, and the, and, and 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 it's 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 just that that vantage points everywhere now. And I think a lot of times, like okay, we got to do this thing functional, man. You know, this what we was doing this past years was it's not it's not sustainable, not on any model. And I wouldn't say the sky is falling like it's falling bad, but the reality is when you're losing all these important role players that are helping your team simply because you can't afford them, you know where. And then of course, if you look at your team, you don't have the people in place to replace the people that you're losing to a degree. You're going to have a great deal of turnover, which would then tie into the fact that the team will take a dip in terms of what you're expecting them to do because you'll see a lot of new faces there and all that kind of stuff. So I agree with you. The sky ain't falling. But to a degree, we have to have a better, a, 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 a upper level of putting some more sense of urgency on the team, man. You know what I'm saying? This is not like business as usual. And I, I'm not going to treat it as such. This is not business as usual. Oh, we just $20 million in the whole queue. We'll be all right. That's business as usual, right? But you're talking $80 million in the hole, man. That's not business as usual. <laughs> and, you know, and this man cutting, like I told you, he got a sharp axe and he's swinging and trying to hit every anybody that's in the room with him. You know, he's trying to cut every any and everybody in the room with him. So, like I said, man, to a degree, you know, it just shows the ver vulnerabilities that we have. And with other teams that our, ne our nemesis or our, our rival teams or teams that we're playing to get, they're, they're in a positive place right now. They're not underneath the cap. You know, they're not in the red. You know, that's just something we need to look at, man. You know, but thank thank you for the comment, Mike. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, I take all different views, man. Don't, you know, it's all good. Lavelle says it's laughable that y'all, he said that y'all saying we don't hit in the draft our best player at every position. We drafted except the Demario Davis. What you talking about? We don't hit in the draft. You Did you look at the last few drafts, Lavelle? What drafts you looking at? What every player you talking about? You ain't talking about every player you hitting in the draft, man. You talking, if you got five or six draft picks, dude, and you talking about a Ryan Ramchek or a Lattimore, guys like that, that's, that's yes, that's the successes of it. But if you look at the drafts, the Saints are not hitting like they support. And I'm expecting not to be 100%, bro. But I'm saying you have draft guys that the Saints are drafting that they're simply getting rid of. They're not giving them an opportunity to do anything. And my question is, why are they drafting these guys and then they're not practice squatting these guys? And I just gave you three examples of guys that the Saints drafted in in succession, and none of them guys ain't on the team no more. He said, "Well, they ain't, they weren't in no were any good." Q. Well, if that was the case, then why the hell they drafted them? Then shouldn't they have known that? So you know, like I'm saying, it's it's a part of it, the due diligence aspect of it, but it's also the part of we we damn sure can get better there. But I do appreciate the Ram checks, the Lattimores. I do appreciate uh, you know uh, the Eric the McCoys. And guys like that, but you know, for every one of them, you got a Davenport who's yet to do anything. You took Traquan Smith, damn near his entire deal before he started showing that he could play. You know, and then of course, what about guys like uh uh Saquon uh, Hampton that was drafted the same year Chauncey Gardner Johnson? What happened to him? What happened to Saquon Hampton? Who was Drake? What happened to Tommy Stevens? What happened to some what happened to you know some of these characters, man? They just put them in the street. They don't practice squad them. They don't keep them. They just put them in the street. And I'm saying if you're drafting these guys and they're a, a third, fourth, fifth round picks, there's a value on that. And you got to be able to practice squad these guys so you can develop them. But a lot of times I've seen them try to take the player and change them into something else. And when it don't work because the guy ain't picking it up, they put them in the street. And I don't understand that. Why are you drafting safeties when you really want corners? Why are you drafting interior linemen when you really want edge rushers? Why are you drafting... Uh, you know, uh, uh, players, period, and trying to play them at other, that don't work for everybody is what I'm saying. It take a degree of patience is what we're saying about the draft. And no, you're not hitting on every draft pick. You hit on a few of them, but no, you're not hitting on them. Go do your research and look up the drafts. We covered this several shows ago when we was going over it. The same, If you have guys that ain't ready to play, some guys are, some guys aren't. You got to be diligent with these guys, especially when you ask them to do stuff that they're not used to doing or haven't done in a while. Case in point, Cesar Ruiz is a current example of first round draft pick that you didn't really need. You drafted the guy, then you played him at guard. That's only because he got hurt. That's half the truth. The truth is when he came in, he was healthy. Deshaun Payton played him, uh, played uh, McCoy at the in training camp for almost a month before he made the switch to put 
Ruiz at center. And Ruiz looked good at center because he was one of the top three guys at the center position. Then Ruiz got hurt. Then he became a guard. Then he became the guard that people gave credit for, for getting blown, letting Drew Brees get blown up. So like I'm saying, you know, you got to have a degree of patience with these players that you are drafting. Even some of the undrafted guys to a degree. But most certainly the guys that get drafted, they have, in, in most people's mind, they got a higher degree, uh, which you got, to, you know, of investment. You put a pick on that player, at least, you know, practice squad them and see what you can got, you know, what you can get. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate that. Derek said, appreciate you. Appreciate you, Derek. Thank you for being here, bro. Just to let you know. But now, nah, yeah, just look it up, Lavelle. You can check it out, my brother. Go look it up. Go look up. They ain't hitting on everything, but that's not a mark against them that they're not hitting on everything. You ain't going to hit on everything. You know, nobody does that. But what I'm saying is when you draft players, know who you drafting, know what they can do, and then give them the time to develop. That's what we're saying here. You know, that's what we're saying. And and that's most certainly that, that, that we're doing. All right, let's keep it going. Charles Taylor, who that to you? Clean hand says, <laughs> your Loomis impression has a little Mike Tyson mixed in it. <laughs> it does, don't it? <laughs> oh, it does, don't it? It does have a little Mike Tyson. You're pretty, you're pretty astute there, clean hands. You're pretty astute. All right, Brandon. What's up, Brandarius? He says, so we're going in the first round. Who are we going with? Cornerback, I think, bringing in Patrick Peterson. A Richard Sermon for the low will get it done. I love Jack Rabbit, but that's a high price to pay. Yeah, I got you on that, bro. We, you know, we, that, 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 they had to free it up. KB says, uh, your head not going to stop hurting. Okay, she's talking to Paul Cameron, yeah. Michael says, can't forget the word look to start every sentence for Loomis. Loom is impression him and Sean. <laughs> that's right. That's right, Michael. <laughs> that's true. He got to say look just like Peyton does. You know, that's, that's true. I'm going to have to remember that. Not to start the press conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the press conference, everybody. Look, look, we're not gonna be able to do all this. I ain't gonna get. <laughs> oh, y'all, y'all are some smart people, man. I tell y'all what, man. Pretty astute too, man. The great same thing, thing got it going on. All right, Charles said for at least seven years. All right, John says Mickey better make sure the clock don't strike twelve on him. All right. <laughs> Inevitable says Sean's favorite word is relative. How about sigil, situa situationals? I think Coach Payton, his, his favorite word is look. Look. He always starts when he get like he mad at the reporter. He says look. And then his other, one of his other favorite words is sigil, sigil, situational. And I'm like, Coach, what the hell is situational? What is that? You know, so that's what it is. And it says QTJ and Nick County will be good reference points. Fist unit mm, entertain. Yeah, yeah. TJ is my dog. Nick Underhill got some good information. And Fist, we had Fist on the show before too. He really good dude too. Matter of fact, we're probably gonna bring Fist back on some stuff, man. You know, he liked the Pelicans and he liked talking about the Saints, man. And we got Pelicans and Saint content. So I guess uh Fisk would be General Fisk could be well warm. He good, he good dude too, man. Really smart dude, man. Really funny dude. Smart dude. I'm gonna have to get Fist back in the building. Uh Jamonius 842 says, should we release Alex Anzalone, he already done. He already done, uh, Jamonis. He's already in uh, uh, a free agent. I don't think the Saints are going to bring him back. No hard feelings to him just because we are way above the cap. Thank you, Demi. Thank you. Thank you, Demi, for the super chat. Much love to you. He says, good evening. Good evening to you, Demi, my friend. Good to see you in the chat. Good to see you too, Demi. I ain't been seeing you a lot. Thank you, Morgan. Appreciate you. Love you too. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Morgan, much love to Morgan. Thank you. Dr. Key. What's up, fam? Tell them love is the key, Dr. Key. Tell them love is the key, Dr. Key. All right. KT, the Southern gent. What's up, fam? Say thanks for the laugh. I buried my grand... Okay, yeah, yeah. Hold on here. Hold on here. Uh, is that what... I don't know what's going on. Is that what you guys hear? Something's going on. It's just popping up. I don't know if that's y'all guys' current Super Chats or not. I don't know if that's the guy's Super Chats or not popping up, but it might just be some old ones that they're they throwing up there. But anyway, big ups to the family. Yeah, yep, yep. That's old Super Chats family. Don't mind that. I don't know why it's doing that right now. So I think something happened there. But uh, anyway, it's updating. I think that's what it is. It's updating. All right, throwing up some old Super Chats. All right, let's keep it going. But thank all, for all the family members for current and old Super Chats. I thank y'all for your Super Chats and Cash Apps. Much love to you. You know, we put it to good use here. Okay, 992 Ras says Ruiz had a tough, no real uh, preseason or training camp. He had to get better in pass blocking. They have, he said they have got way better under Peyton than years ago. 
He said their best draft was three years ago. Look at the talent they got. Yeah, that was that's true. That's true. Nine nine two Raz. Uh, they did good good talent last year, but you know you know each one of these drafts you want to kind of accentuate things and and um you know you know if you look at it, you know if you do like if you're getting good talent from every draft you might not hit if you got five picks. You know, most people like to get at least two, three guys, two or three guys out of there, you know, that can actually help the team moving forward. And um, and I and I'm of the opinion that the Saints do well after the second round. You know what I'm saying, family? Y'all agree with that? The Saints really do well from like the second round to like the seventh round. Because you can look at guys like Marcus Colson and you know that they got the seventh round and guys like uh 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 um uh, Zach Streif, who was also a seventh round. Matter of fact. Uh, Zach, Zach, yeah, Zach Streif and Marcus Colson with seven round selections. And that's like, that's a, that's the thing that happens over the years when the Saints, they really do a, a, just a superb job of finding that, that, that talent. Like they found Teron Armstead. Teron was like, uh, he was out of Arkansas Pine Bluff and they find him and developed him into an all pro offensive lineman. So the Saints, whether it's a big school or it's a small school or in between school, the Saints do a wonderful job especially over the last several years of finding that talent, but we just got to quantify that a bit. We got to be able to get a, do a little bit better uh, than what we were doing, especially with that last draft last year. We went after Tommy Stevens, giving up multiple picks to get back up in the draft and then ultimately end up getting, putting the guy in the street. You know, I'm all, like I said before, stop looking to draft Taysom Hill clones and look at some Drew Brees clones. Why don't you? I think that'll go a long way. Charles said, I love that. Love that. Who that nation. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate you being here, fam. Hayabu says Ruiz need to be under center where he belongs. Yeah, he's too undersized to play the guard position. But 992 Rass is right. He played, he did after, you know, later on in the season, did get better when he learned earn opportunity to get out there. Of course, Nick Easton had, you know, were getting concussions and and they were forced to play him. But when they did, he did get a, he get stronger and he did a lot better at the guard position. Despite that play where he, you know, he was out of the play and Drew got hurt. But, you know. You know, but, you know, this year he come back, he's definitely going to be the center uh, starting camp, which is a good thing. And McCoy can shift the guard. And I think they'll that that young line will be terrific. So with that being said, uh, Jeff says, no matter how you slice it and dice it, it's, this team is rebuilding. Yes. And Jeff, you know, nobody wants to admit to that, bro. Nobody wants to admit to that. You don't they don't want to say the, the dirty word rebuild or retool. Nobody won't hear that. They don't hear that. You getting rid of all your veterans. I keep telling people that you are getting rid of your veterans. I mean, starters, man. We ain't talking about like role players. I'm talking about key starters. Yes, wide receiver opposite of Mike Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, hasta la vista. Backup running back Latavius Murray, he about to go. You got your tight ends, both tight ends. Jared Cook is garbage, but Josh Hill was a good backup, hasta la vista. You got uh, what else? Janoris Jenkins, hasta la vista. Juan Alexander, perhaps he gets healthy the same sign him back, but he's in the street. Oscar La Vista, we know he was going to go anyway. And then, you know, and there are other players, you know, that probably going to be in the street as well. So you're going to bring in, you're looking for draft picks, and you're trying to trade those players for draft picks, which shows me that uh, money is an issue, obviously, right? And, of course, we don't have enough draft picks. And don't forget the NFL has not yet given its discipline on the Saints for the last set of C-19 violations we had. They took a seven-round selection from us. What do they take from us now, coming up soon, with Elvin Kamara's situation occurred? What do they take from us? Do they take a third? Do they take two threes? We don't know what they're going to do because this is rarefied territory. We're in new territory as far as that's concerned. So, you know, uh, Goodell likes spiking the Saints, and we gave him a reason to. How bad does he spike the Saints this time around? We know it's going to be a big cash fine, but will it be a higher draft pick than what we anticipated? Would it be a three? Would it be two threes? I don't know what he's going to do, family. I just don't know. He's he going to take his time, but we'll know. We'll know it probably before the draft. So thank you for that, Jeff. You're right. We definitely, it looks like it definitely to me rebuild. And Antonio says the Bucks have hit on all 15 draft picks seven years from D2 all guard to our prime to the lab. One Saints left. Uh, he says one Saints have hit on is AK. All right, Antonio. Tramal says, I hope Peyton don't waste any picks this year. I don't think he will this year. I think the Saints are going to take that the draft serious this year, man. You know, with the money situation. I think they will. Inevitable says, uh, uh, Evans, Knicks. Yeah, that's right. Good calls right there. 
Ajari Evans, uh, Knicks, he talked about 41. He said he's going to win 10 games for us. Chauncey, they found on Yamada, says Tramal. Yep, yep. Trey says, uh, I expect him to waste one of them thirds if he got the – well, the, the league might take one of them. You never know. What's up, Abraham? Antonio says, y'all draft, but no chip 15 years. Uh, Antonio, and Michael says, Q, last good first round that we got was Cam. Well, we spent – remember, we spent two first-round draft picks uh, uh, on uh, – a couple years ago on uh, Davenport. We haven't got a return on that yet. So a lot of people ready to call him a bust. I'm not going to do that yet because he could have a Trey Hendrickson type of year, you know, and, and I'm just saying I'm not going to call Davenport a bust. It's, it's, you know, he going into his fourth year. He's going – he has the starting lineup. He got the spot clearing through. Let's see how he performs, man. And, and then another good thing about it too, family, is that he went into the uh, for, into the offseason healthy. Think about that. He Davenport went into the offseason healthy, which is a very positive thing because that won't stall him working out and getting himself and his body together. That can mean a lot. So think about that too. All right. Thank you for that. Michael Abraham says, Q, why? He says, why do they got rid of Janaris Jenkins? Money, bro. Money. Simply money. That's what it came down to, my friend. Paul says, Q, what do you think about making the NFL draft 10 rounds from just 10 rounds? I think seven rounds is better. He said, there would be more picks, but, you know, uh, I, I probably would stick with seven. I remember back in the day they used to do 10 rounds, but I, I still say seven rounds. You know, it, it pro it'd probably factor out to be the same thing. But I, I like the seven-round system right now, to be honest with you, Brother Paul. Thanks for asking. Tramal said, Loomis like being in debt. <laughs> as long as it ain't his money, right? Match says, Jay have to go young, but they have experience the last two years. I know Brother Jerry. Brother Jerry says, screw Dale. Yeah, it's coming. Get ready. I've been warning the family about it. It's coming. What violation? He says, locker room video of Kamara at the club. They already took the step. No, clean hands. No, 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 clean hands. We ain't talking about that. The lock, we talking about not the club. We talking about the fact that this happened right after, like days after the Saints were eliminated from the playoffs. The next week, Goodell and them came out and said, and it was an article, and we covered it, of that the fact that the Saints uh, was allowing Elvin Kamara, he wasn't wearing his 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 uh, his, his uh, tracing watch and all of the, 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 the C-19 stuff that came with it. You're supposed to be, and all this kind of stuff. The, he wasn't wearing his watch to track him and all that, all the stuff they agreed to do that they were doing, like the NFL, the NBA players was doing. The NFL players agreed to the similar thing. He wasn't doing that, and the Saints knew it and did not check him on that, and they are going to hammer the Saints behind that because of Kamara. And then Kamara, not only did he screw him like that, but then he hit the club when he wasn't supposed to hit the club. Then he, he had that, that C-19 test, had the whole room shut down. And truth be told, we should have shut him down for that Chicago's Bears game. We should have did. That should have been a punishment, truth be told. We should have shut Elvin Kamara down for that game for punishment, for violating and putting at risk the entire running back room, including the damn coach. Remember, we should have shut him down for that Bears game. We would have been all right with Trey Hendricks, I mean, with uh, with Latavius Murray and, and, uh, and, uh, and Ty Montgomery and whoever else we needed to do, Dwayne Washington. We would have been fine. But, you know, that just sets a bad precedent, you know, it, to me. But the Saints are going to have to pay for that. They're going to have yeah, they're gonna have to pay for that. And that, and remember, they already took the seven-round pick like you astutely mentioned. But remember, this is a whole other thing, you know, and the Saints violated again. And this was a bigger one because this was something that just happened over one game and say he did that for one week. This was actually something that happened over the entire season, and they knew about it, then didn't spring it up on you until after the season was over with. See, they got spies in the building, and I'm telling you, it's a lot more other stuff that they can hit the Saints with, like the falsification of those injury reports, like I've been telling y'all about. They got all that data, man. They have all it, and G Goodell got the Saints like this, and it's our own fault because we got to play it straight. We got to play it straight. But well, thank you for your uh, for that question, bro. All right. Uh, Inevitable said Hakeem Hicks was our first pick that year, and it was a third rounder. Javier says, like I said yesterday, time to blow up the roster. It's time to move on. I believe in Mickey. And show. We, well, look like they they creating some waves here, bro. You know, they really are. Turning a lot of stuff. Michael says, Q Luma's watched too much uh, Grant Cardone philosophy. He says that you can never have too much. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. 
Paul says, "Yeah, Q and the whole RD room shut down. Yeah, they should have. They should have. They should have set them down, man. You know, and we wanted them to play, but in retrospect, we should have set Elvin Kamara down as punishment for what he did. You know, it would at least held him accountable for his because he endangered the whole running back run. You know, and he and the only reason he didn't play in a, in that Week 17 matchup is because the C19 restrictions forced him out for a certain period of time." But truth be told, the Saints should have shut him down in that game to make a point, you know, to punish him for for that bad decision, you know. And we would have been fine with Latavius, and he could have came back against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But you know, like I said, man, it's it's all, you know, it's just some troubles troubling behavior I'm seeing right there. I hope it's nothing, man. I, I mean, I I see it, and uh, let's see if they can check that thing. You know, we'll see. Jerry says, all these violations, damn, no one that screwed Dell and NFL hate our guts so much. We are doing it to ourselves, brother Jerry. You're absolutely right. He says, how, how is everyone doing a year later today? I mean, it, it's absolutely true, though. I mean, the Saints are doing We're doing this to ourselves, man. We might hate Goodell for the crap, the, the, the bounty gate and all that. That was, that was messed up because he had it for you. But any other thing that occurs after this point is strictly on you. You know, we can't break the rules. And we can't mess around because you don't have a Robert Kraft or whatever the dude name is from New England who they'll tell you to burn the tape because he up in there getting a massage in the wrong places. <laughs> oh, his old nasty ass up in there getting a massage. But, you know, in the wrong places. Well, actually, I guess in the right places, right? But the reality of the day, you don't have that. You got Gail and Gail ain't doing all that. We don't got the connections that the Krafts have. Let me just put it to you like that. You know what I'm saying? That's the perfect, and that's the perfect name for Robert Kraft with his cheesy ass. <laughs> I couldn't help myself on that one. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. All right. But big ups to the rest of the family members, man. I'm going I'm to put the show at an end right there. I'd like to thank all the great St. Thank Tank family members for chiming in on this edition of the Sports Coma. Once again, I appreciate you guys being in the building. I really do. I appreciate y'all. I want y'all to stay safe out there. <laughs> Y'all look out for each other. Take care of each other. You know what I'm saying? And keep sending blessing and well wishing to all the family members out there. Brother Derek, much love to you. Good to see you in the stream. And all the other family members that's out there that's having difficulties in their marriage or in their relationships or in their in their homes due to economic situations or, or health-wise. You see what I'm saying? Those seem to be the three major things right now that a lot of really good people are actually going through right now and i just want to issue out to all the great saint thank tank family members all of the love in the world that that we can muster may blessings fall upon you and your home your house your family your friends and your loved ones may the most high keep you safe and protected may the most high bless every positive and righteous endeavor that you partake in you know may you get the guidance and wisdom to be able to lead you to your path of prosperity, happiness, and completion. And that's what I wish upon the family members out there. And uh, listen, man, I, I really do thank the world of you guys. Don't ever think that you guys are less than great. And I, I, I say that a lot. I tell you guys that a lot because I really mean that, man. We need a lot of them good blessings and that great love. And I'm sending it to the entire great St. Thank Tank and everybody in earshot that'll hear me. Let them words touch your heart and your mind and put you at ease to let you know that we all together here and we're going to make it together, baby. So don't you even threat on me, you know. So with that being said, please feel free to hit the like button, hit the notification bell. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Check out the merch. The link is in the description section. Join our YouTube page and also join our Patreon. It helps out the platform so we can do keep doing great shows to entertain the family members and later on tonight family the pelican post game report will fall our pelican lovers and our pelican people who love the pelicans later on tonight we'll be doing the pelican post game report to recap the pelicans win that's right i said it. the pelicans win over the minnesota timberwolves tonight in the smoothie king center so with that being said i appreciate y'all who that to your cool i see your family trey joseph Rome. good to see y'all in the chat what's up willie Big ups to your fam. Appreciate you being here as well. And family, we'll be back tomorrow on the Sports Coma 
We're going to have black suede on for five or four or five hours. We open up the land, uh, lines of communication. And I promise you, I'm going to do a lot better at kind of expediting the calls without rushing the family members. Perhaps I'll put like a, a, a little timer on there or something for the family members. That might work. What y'all think about that? Put a little timer on there for the family members. Make it like five minutes or so, maybe five minutes to speak your speech. What you think about that family? Y'all let me know. Put it in the comment section. Let me know. Should I put up a timer? Uh, five minutes or y'all tell me what y'all think to speak y'all speech. So with that, Stan, appreciate y'all for chiming in. I love y'all. Y'all keep y'all heads up. And I'll see y'all on tomorrow's show. My Pelican people, I'll see you tonight on the Pelican Post Game Report. Peace. Yeah. Well, all right. Like you always say. Welcome, hey. welcome, welcome. Number one sports talk indeed. indeed. Uh. We ain't like the Falcons. We won't blow the lead. Look, all we talk is who that? Uh. Who got cut and who back? Uh. Rookies in the vents. Uh. Players you should look at. Yeah. It's the sports coma. You don't want to miss it. Got the pre-game, party, post-game statistics. Get a visit from Sway. Maybe DC or fly. It's the hottest thing smoking. Big Q in the guys. Go to YouTube live. Make sure you subscribe. In the views inside the Saints locker room high. Talk to Drew, Jordan, Zach, Peyton. New Orleans, who that nation? Best believe when I say we bleed gold and black. Ain't a miracle or rivalry could ever hold us back. No, beast quake, bounty gate. Let the truth be told. It's the sports coma. All we know is say Super Bowl. Yeah.